So how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel and part three of our escapades with this little temperature puck here from Amazon. So in the first video I tested it just with the U1461A and this 1041 resistance decade box. That would be my usual setup for testing something like this. Having purchased a number of these process calibrators, my next option was to see how the measurement capabilities of each of these compared to the U1461A, but again still using my 1041 decade box. Uh, and the results do show generally that these instruments do read better than the U1461A. In this video, I'm gonna look at the PT100 simulation capabilities of some of these calibration units, namely uh, the SG-004A here, the LB02 and the MR9270S. These all have the capability to output a PT100 resistance standard. So that will be used to replace this resistance decade box. And what that should hopefully do is speed up the process of taking the measurements because I will no longer have to go back to a reference table to get the right resistance value to feed into the temperature puck. Uh, with these units, I can actually select the temperature measurement direct. Now in fairness, uh, Time Electronics do do another unit, which is the Time 1049. That is a resistance decade box that has been calibrated to act as a PT100 simulator. You could use that. That is quite an expensive unit, not as expensive as the 1041, but it is more expensive than these. So if these work, this gives me quite a nice option. Uh, so we're starting off with our SG-004A here. Um, to get to the PT100 output, uh, if we select the out function, uh, if we can keep it in screen, uh, you can see here we have hold it up a little bit closer and keep it out of the light. You have here the ohm function on the right hand side and you can select degrees C or degrees F and down here you can select the PT100, CU50 or a resistance output. You have an offset function that you can use there. So if we go back, uh, we are set to minus 50 degrees C here at the moment and you can see if we get all of these on, on some light, you can see the reading in there is pretty good. I won't go through this completely. Um, I'll just put results up at the end and I'll just go through a couple of salient points. Uh, so to change the temperature on this, we can use the cursors here and we can go, uh, there's our zero there, which should give us two volts output. And you can see 2.002, 2.01, 2.002, 2.002, 2.002, Really good consistency across all the units with that measurement. Um, let's go, uh, there's our 50 there, which should be four volts output. Uh, again, they are all within spec by the looks of it. Let's go uh, 100. And again, that should be six volts. Let's go 150, and then finally let's go up to the 200. So you can see it's quite quick to go through these actual measurement values. Uh, if I wanted to get to the 175 degree reading point there, I'd just uh, cursor down to 180, go across, and then I can go down to 75 there. Hopefully you can see. And that should be nine volts, and we've got nine, 8.99, 9.002, 9.002 9 again, 9.002 again, and nine volts there, 9.01 on the SG-003A. So simple to operate, and judging by the face value of these, it looks to be reasonably accurate measurements. Now, as I said, the SG-004A isn't the only one that can do this. We can swap this over and try not to drop him on the floor. Let's go onto the input there and put him back up there for you. And this is the 
MR9270S. So again, you can select PT100 on this. Very, very similar uh, way to do this. If we go to the output, you can see number eight down here is RTD, and we can select RTD there, and you can see output PT100. Uh, temperature to be put in is exactly the same process. You can use the up arrow keys. Uh, there's 50 there, uh, which we do have to turn the output on. So then we can get a reading. So there's 50, which should be the 4 volts. Uh, we are 4.025, 4.023, 4.024. So we're a little bit high on this one. 4.025 again. Uh, let's go up to our 100. It should be 6 volts, and we're smack on there. 6.010. 6.008, 6.009. Again, our furnace is bouncing around. If you can see that on the screen there, uh, 6.010. So again, fairly similar operation. And to be honest, it takes me about the same time using the MR9270S as it does the SG-004A. There wasn't much difference uh, between them, really. And then finally, the LB02. We'll just show you that one. Uh, let's go on input voltage there. Now to set our LB02 up, it's slightly different. Uh, we can go to the ohms reading there, and then we can actually use our cursor keys and go through CU50 there, ohms, or back to PT100. We're set to 200 degrees C. On that one, and we are 9.97, 9 9.96, 9.97, 9.97s uh, there. So uh, not quite as accurate with this unit as with the other ones. Um, to change temperature on this, we use our two cursor keys up here. So we can go down in tens here, go down to 150, and we are. That should give us the eight volts which uh, we're pretty close to 7.98s. So we're a little bit out again. We should be in the 7.99s really. Um, uh, let's go down to our 100. And uh, we're on six volts there. 5.98 there, 5.98, 5.98, 5.99. So we're close. Uh, oh, it's turned off. Uh, so to get to the 5 degree measurement on this, uh, I use the step button here. I press the step button, it changes the cursor, and then I can go down in individual steps there. Or I can go up, change the step again, it changes to the tens digit, and then I can go down to uh, 80 there, so I have to go back to 5s. Uh, 75 there should be 5 volts and we are 4.99, 4.988, 4.99 should be within spec I would imagine or very close to it 4.99 so I did seem to have a bit more of an accuracy issue with this unit and as you did see there I do sometimes mess the keys up so I was a little bit slower doing the measurements with this unit than I was with either the MR9270S or the SG dash 004A. However, I kind of feel that that's more of an issue with familiarity with this unit rather than a specific issue with the unit itself. I do use the SG-004A and the MR9270S much more than I use this LB02, so I just put it down to the fact that I'm more familiar with the way these units operate rather than um, with this unit, uh, and that's what's made this a little bit slower. So that's the general process. Uh, all three units work, they're all capable of it. What I'll do now is put the tables up and we'll look at some of the results that we obtained when using each of these units in place of the 1041. We'll look at the first table here and this is displaying the results of the measurements in terms of the 0.2% full scale tolerance of the little temperature puck here itself. 
So we look first at the 1041 being used for the simulation and you can see I've got a 100% set of results, a complete series of ticks there in the intolerance column. Uh, moving over to the LB02, this is where things start to go a little awry. Uh, we can see here the first four results are out of tolerance. We've then got three that are in tolerance and then followed by another four that are out of tolerance. Now if we look at the accuracy of the U1461A here on the six volt scale, which is what it be using for the measurements up to six volts where we've got three digits. Uh, this does tend to read slightly high, so I can't really explain those top four ones being out other than it has to be down to this LB02 here. Uh, moving down onto those last four that are out of tolerance as well, they are on the 60 volt scale. You can see where it's dropped down to two digits. Now on the 60 volt scale, the U1461 does tend to read a little bit low, therefore that could also be adding to the inaccuracy that you're seeing there as the readings are all below the minimum value expected for that. So could be a bit of a combination of both of the instruments, which is something that you come across when you start to use multiple instruments. Uh, move across to the SG-004A. Again, we are completely and utterly in tolerance. All pretty good strong values there. A uh, complete column of ticks. Uh, the M9270S, we just got the one that's out of tolerance on the 4 volt reading, uh, which is going to just slightly over. Uh, not 100% sure why that is, can't really explain that. You can see with the other instruments, you're actually well within the tolerances. It's just that particular value there for the MR9270S that seems to have a problem. Um, so, a bit of an unusual one, that one really. Uh, so, we'll move on. Uh, we've got a comparison plot here, so whereas the previous data was based around 0.2% full-scale tolerance, this one I've just calculated the tolerance against the nominal values there. And the interesting aspect with this one for me is that blue line that's on the 1041. Being the simulation, you can see it's actually a relatively linear trend, fairly straight, uh, not much deviation there at all. If we look at the SG-004A and the MR9270S that are operating in a similar sort of area to the 1041 you can see a bit of erratic behaviour to the values going up and down um, so not much of a linear response there really at all uh, and then we get to the poor LB02 uh, in orange down there which is more of an exponential curve really doesn't it um, so that's that graph there and then just these three final graphs here just to bring a few more aspects into which unit you may want to choose. Um, we've averaged out the error in this top left plot here, and you can quite clearly see the 1041 and uh, 0.103 tolerance there, much better than any of the other instruments. But if we jump over to the cost comparison on the right hand side, you can see it is actually the most expensive item, and by some quite considerable amount there, really 462 pounds. Uh, the closest you get is 199 for the MR9270S. Uh, and if we jump down to the bottom graph there, the plot there is showing the test time by the simulator type. And you can see that the 1041 actually takes me the longest to do the calibration with that than it does with any of the other three units that I used. Um, which, it doesn't look like too much of a difference, but if you're in a boiler or process with 30, 40 different temperature pucks in there. That small difference can obviously start to add up. Uh, going back around the graphs again, looking at the LB02, you can see it gives the worst value, but on the right hand side there it is the cheapest one. So it's a bit of a case of you get what you pay for, isn't it really? Uh, nice and cheap, but the results aren't quite as accurate. In terms of the test time at the bottom there, it's better than the 1041, but slightly worse than the SG-004A and the MR. 9270S, however, I think that's down more to me. I don't use this unit an awful lot. I think if I did, I would be able to bring down the use of this to a similar sort of time as I've taken with the other two instruments there. And finally, moving on to these uh, SG-04A and the MR9270S there. Similar sort of tolerance 
not an awful lot between them. You could say the same for the price really, it's slightly cheaper, um, but there's not an awful lot of difference between the price of the two units. Uh, and you might get better shopping around as well. And test time, the, both the units operate in a similar manner, so it takes you pretty much the same time to test. So there you go then, that's kind of the results of this video. Uh, old school method using the Decade Box seems to be producing better results than using these for simulation. Although to be honest, you could probably use any of these and get a good understanding of how the system is working if you're just fault finding. If you're doing specific calibrations at this moment in time, I can't better that unit there, uh, which is quite interesting really. Uh, but that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.